Hi, I'm Bill Peebles, and in this video, I'll talk about our new paper, GAN Supervised Dense Visual Alignment. This is work with Junyun Zhu, Richard Zhang, Antonio Taraba, Alyosha Efros, and Ellie Schechtman. In this paper, we tackle the joint alignment problem. Here are a bunch of photos from the Elson Katz dataset. We propose a method that can jointly align entire datasets of complex images just like this. To get a better sense of why this is useful, let's focus on only a few images from Elson Katz and the dataset average image. Here we show our learned transformations of these few images that bring them into joint alignment. Through the average aligned image, we can find accurate dense correspondences between all of the images. And our algorithm does this without relying on any correspondent supervision whatsoever, and despite being trained exclusively on GAN data. It generalizes automatically to real data at test time. As we'll show later on, our algorithm works surprisingly well when applied per frame to video and can be used to power a variety of mixed and augmented reality applications. Our method takes inspiration from the classic congealing work from Eric Learned Miller. Congealing showed that you can learn per image affine transformations to bring a dataset into joint alignment in an unsupervised fashion. However, it only worked on simple datasets with limited appearance variation, like binarized MNIST images. In this work, we introduced congealing. Rather than learn per image affine warps, we train a spatial transformer network that predicts highly expressive transformations of images, and it works for extremely diverse Elson level datasets. The million dollar question here is, how can we actually train this spatial transformer network? And the key insight of our paper is to use a GAN to generate the training data. At a high level, we build a pair dataset to train our spatial transformer network. The input image in each pair is drawn from a GAN pre-trained on the unaligned input distribution. The targets in each pair are formed by gradually interpolating just a portion of the input latent code towards our learned target vector which roughly controls pose. This leads to target images that retain the appearance of the input, but are rendered in the current template mode. Critically, these targets are learned jointly with the STN end to end. Gangealing is an instantiation of our GAN supervised learning framework where we jointly learn a neural network along with its GAN generated training data. For each training pair, our spatial transformer observes the input fake image and predicts and applies a sampling grid to transform it into the target image. Finally, we apply a perceptual loss between the prediction and the target. A critical point to make this system work is to update both the spatial transformer network itself as well as C, our learn target mode. Note also that the generator's weights are frozen throughout this process. Let's take a look at how our GAN supervised training pairs evolve over the course of training. At the start of training, we initialize the target vector with the truncation trick. And as training proceeds, the target vector learns a mode in the dataset that makes the spatial transformer's job as easy as possible. You can also see that the training data generated by the GAN is sometimes incoherent. For example, all input images, except the second and the left column, do not really feature a coherent cat. We make no effort at all to filter these kinds of bad images during training, and our method just works well even with this imperfect training data. Here's how our learn mode evolves for Elson dogs, and also for Elson bicycles. For this dataset, we can see that many of the targets slightly change appearance, such as the color of the bicycle, in contrast to the input. Again, our method trains successfully even with these kinds of imperfect target images. Finally, here's the evolution of our learned training data for Elson TVs. Note that the initial targets generated with the truncation trick are a pretty poor visual quality, and they don't really even look like a TV monitor. At the end of training, though, they do look like televisions, and this highlights why it's crucial that we optimize the latent to find a high-quality template for these challenging datasets. All right, now let's get back to results on real images. And again, just to reiterate, our method is trained only on GAN data, and then it automatically generalizes to work for real images at test time. Here are some successful results on Elson bicycles. Our method can handle bikes with heavy appearance variations and even out of plane rotation of the wheels and frame. Next up, our results on Elson dogs. Gangeling is able to perform fairly extreme zooms to localize objects of interest, and this is something that we observe very frequently with these Elson datasets, not just Elson dogs. Next up is Elson TVs. Gangeling handles different types of monitors, even those that are different from the template image, correctly localizes small objects, and accurately accounts for some out of plane rotation. On Cub, Gangeling works well for birds with different morphologies and orientations. And for In the Wild Celebe, our method learns accurate dense correspondences for faces. So 
Some especially diverse data sets just can't be well aligned to a single template. You need more than one template. So a simple extension to our method is to learn more than one target mode and more than one spatial transformer, each of which will specialize in transforming images to its assigned mode. During training, we can render each fake image with each of our learned modes and query each spatial transformer with the same fake input. To encourage specialization, we only optimize the minimum of the resulting perceptual losses. The way to think about this at a higher level is that we want to assign fake images to the mode which best represents that fake image. And the minimum reconstruction loss gives a good heuristic for this kind of assignment. We use this clustering variant of Gangeling for Elsland horses and cars with four learned clusters each. We use the KMES++ initialization algorithm to select starting latents. And here we show the target images generated using the truncation trick. Uh, clearly this is a really bad template, especially for Elsland horses. And it again shows that you just can't rely on the truncation trick to provide a good template. Here are our four learned clusters at the end of training. And here are our results for Elson cars. You can see that our clustering essentially partitions 3D space to make the spatial transformer's job as easy as possible. Now let's take a look at some dense correspondence results for a couple of our clusters. Here is one of our clusters for Elson horses. And here's one cluster for Elson cars. This mode in particular can handle some amounts of out-of-plane rotation. Our average congealed image is a template which can propagate anything to images of the same class. For example, by dragging a Batman mask onto our average congealed cat, a user can effortlessly propagate their edit to a massive number of images. Or a user can put a soldier onto a bird template. And just in time for the holidays, you can turn your dog into Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with just a few edits on our average congealed Elson dog image. For In the Wild Celebe, our method learns to very accurately handle deformations of the face, which makes it great for propagating things like tattoos that lie on the surface of the face. Or you can add saddles to horses, or you can add unicorn horns with one of our other learned horse templates. And finally, here are our results adding a decal to our average congealed car image. A surprising result of Gangeeling is that our spatial transformer empirically works well when applied per frame to videos without leveraging any temporal information whatsoever. This can be used to do single object dense tracking to power various mixed reality applications like object filters. Here are results on many videos. Note that in all cases, we always propagate annotations from our average congealed image. By annotating that single image once, users can propagate their edits to as many videos as they like without any additional annotations required.
Now let's take a look at some visual comparisons against other methods. Compared to algorithms that solve the general correspondence problem, Ganjiling tends to produce much smoother results on video. Here we compare against the current state-of-the-art correspondence supervised method, which produces pretty jittery results on many videos. We also compare against RAFT, a state-of-the-art supervised optical flow method. Unlike our method, RAFT requires annotating at least one frame per video, and RAFT can work well for some videos with relatively stable camera motion, but as we'll see in a minute, it has trouble with sudden movements for some categories as errors accumulate over time. Now let's chat a bit about limitations. This video does a good job at illustrating when our spatial transformer fails. Whenever there's significant out-of-plane rotation, our spatial transformer really has no way to congeal to the template and will just give poor results. Also, the spatial transformer can sometimes be sensitive to occlusions, particularly ones that obscure important parts of the template, like eyes. Other types of failure modes are complex orientations of objects that the GAN does a bad job of modeling. For example, our method tends to do a pretty bad job at handling flying birds. A final application I'll talk about is automated dataset preprocessing for downstream GAN training. Here we see a random walk through a style GAN2 trained on Elson Cats. The Elson Cats dataset is not aligned in contrast to many popular datasets used in GAN training like AFHQ or FFHQ. To solve this, we can apply our spatial transformer to align every image in the dataset. And as described in our paper, we also have a protocol for filtering unalignable images with our spatial transformer. Training again from scratch on our pre-processed Elson Cats yields higher visual fidelity by reducing the complexity of the distribution. We hope our learned preprocessing will be used in the future to automate the important yet costly step of dataset preprocessing in downstream machine learning applications. For more details and quantitative results, please see our paper. And also check out our GitHub repository for code and pre-trained models, which are available now. Thanks for watching.